I'm surprised more people don't actually ask us about the recoveries. I'll give you a personal opinion. I hope that doesn't get me in trouble. It's in the interest of all countries to collaborate today because we don't know which vaccine is going to be successful. This virus is relatively stable. It's not a matter of the change in the virus. It's a matter of a change in the transmission of the virus. It's up to the countries to take our advice or reject it. I assure you that WHO gives the best advice we can based on science and evidence. It's up to the countries to reject or accept. Last week here at the World Health Organization in Geneva during their press conferences, the Director General said that if the world would have listened to him on January 30th, when there were only 82 cases and no death worldwide, things would have been better today. You can check for yourselves, countries who, ho who followed that are in a better position than others. This is fact. Health expert Monsignor Robert Vitillo about world population control and conspiracy theories that are floating around. Okay, I'll give you a personal opinion. I hope that doesn't get me in trouble. Uh, but first of all, it's hard for me to think that governments would lock down the world and close down a global economy just because they want to. And so I don't think that that's the way these regulations came about. I really do believe that they came about because of the good advice by public health experts and by scientists to try to restrict the transmission of the virus so that fewer and fewer people are infected. And then for the uh, economic life, the social life and work life to reopen, but gradually. And so I think that's the basis of these requirements, not simply uh, for governments to uh, exercise raw power. I think they have other ways they could exercise power than to try to close down the whole world. As the international race for a vaccine continues, there are currently over 100 countries, or candidates as the organization calls them, that are in concrete stages of a preclinical development. Seven candidates have gone into human testing we hope that of these hundred, at least a few will prove to be safe and efficacious against COVID. And it's in the interest of all countries to collaborate today because we don't know which vaccine is going to be successful. And we, we have to ensure that people everywhere in all countries have access to the vaccine. COVID-19 has cracked the fabric of society like nothing else in modern history. It also may divide our identities and future ID cards and passports could look different. Um, yes, there are some countries that are considering the use of a passport or a certificate, um, which would indicate that somebody has been infected to uh, infected with COVID-19 and has developed some immunity. It might become a policy for people to have to be vaccinated uh, by this virus, uh, from this virus, and then also to be able to show that they were vaccinated. I have to do that very often when I travel to, uh, East, uh, to Southeast Asia and to Africa, because the there are uh, outbreaks of yellow fever in those countries still, and therefore the government uh, authorities want to be sure that I'm protected by a vaccine, vaccination, or that if I'm coming from a country where it's a problem, then that I'm not going to spread that uh, to another country. So I always carry my yellow book uh, uh, with me of all my vaccinations, and sometimes I have to show that to the immigration authorities when I enter a country. If this gets distorted, then it could be uh, very misleading. So we, we need to have a scientific, uh, in, scientifically informed debate on what the use of such documentation and such testing will be. Um, and I hope that that happens immediately, sooner rather than later, and we can get the, all get the answers that we need. As many countries loosen up their restrictions, the question arises, did the virus change last week? It's not a matter of the change in the virus. It's a matter of a change in the transmission of the virus. And so we have fewer spread of infection in many countries and also fewer deaths in many countries. And, and so it's the change in the transmission of the virus that's allowing governments then to gradually opening up, but still to encourage people to have good hygiene uh, and also to do social distancing, staying at least two meters apart. 
right? There are a, a large number of people who have recovered from this. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's in the hundreds of thousands of people, if not over a million people so far, that have recovered from infection. While there certainly is justified hope that soon the nightmare will be over, make no mistake. And let's face the present bottom line facts. We have at the moment nothing for prevention with vaccine and we have at the moment no licensed therapeutics. This should change. Thank you very much.